So, with me today is Martin Ucic. He has written the book Integral Relationships that I think has got to be the most profound description of how to find a partner, especially if you are a single man and you want to find out what is a match that could, in the long run, serve both me and my partner. It is based on the integral theory of Ken Wilber and uh, Ken has also endorsed the book and uh, you have an ongoing discussion with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, also an exciting future for the seminars, workshops that you are leading. Uh, Martin has just led a course here this weekend with his partner. Mm -hmm. And um, Martin, tell me a little bit more about what this is all about. Yes, thank you, Jackie. Um, well, my, my background is that I was married twice the second time with a, uh, with a German woman for 14 years. And we moved to the US in 1995 and uh, separated amicably in 2002. And then I tried to find a new partner and found myself in a different culture. I was older, I had kids and uh, was quite uh, startled how difficult it became for me to find, to find a new partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I uh, found the organization called Singles to Couples to figure out these relationship problems that I had learned that so many people experience here mm -hmm. and uh, couldn't make any sense out of it until uh, I started to read books from Ken Wilber who you uh, already mentioned and one day it hit me that if I would apply his you know, comprehensive integral theory yep. uh, that he developed to the territory of male-female relationships mm. that at least in my mind it made sense why I had such difficulties. Mm. So I thought well I'm going to write a book about it and it won't take very long and it ended up to take four years to, to really apply his map to the territory of male-female relationships. And uh, I can imagine because there's also some other maps that you fit into the picture. Yes, yes, I had to make some modification and some additions yep. And uh, I really wrote just the book for me to understand what my problems was, but then it, it became quite a, a success and is now read in over 30 countries. So, mm. so Great. Very happy about that. Could you say something uh, about the structure or the ingredients that are involved that, you, uh, that is useful to know more about? Yes. Uh -huh. um, well, um, Ken's model that I apply has a few core elements. One is the, what he calls the four quadrants, that we all have an interior mind, an exterior body, that is embedded in a way in, in a cultural context, which mm. we might call the intersubjective framework that mm. we all live in, and the interobjective, the social structure mm. that we live in. And very often when we uh, approach relationships, we only look at one of these areas. For example, mm. a man may only look at the physical body and the attractiveness of a woman, mm. and a woman may primarily look at the social success and the social status that a man has, and are not so informed about the interior intersubjective mm. realm and uh, areas in the in individual interior, like consciousness development, spiritual mm -hmm. development, sexual development. So we look at developmental lines, we call that, or developmental stages in, in these four basic quadrants. And the main premise of the book is, is that couples who are compatible in their development in each of the quadrants and mm -hmm. have similar backgrounds and also vision for the future or purpose, mm -hmm that they are more compatible than couples who are not. Yeah. And then they can make an agreement once you find a partner, or even if you are in a relationship, you can make a new agreement with a partner to heal, because it's not only about growth, but also about healing old wounds, right? Which often separate partners and create conflict in relationship. So to heal, to learn about the integral relationship model and what it really takes to have a post-postmodern mm. relationship and to grow together and then to serve a purpose as a couple that is larger than the individual. Okay. So you're not only looking at each other and does he make me happy, does she make me happy, hmm. but you also look together into the future as yeah. evolutionary people and say what is our evolutionary purpose that we can uniquely serve as a couple better than we could serve as individuals. Hmm. 
So that's the integral relationship vision. And, and I think there is one uh, point that will stick out to many people, and that is the developmental part of uh, the person's life that we are developing. Yes. Often we talk about types uh, and so forth, who, who, what kind of person would fit me, mm -hmm. but it's also a matter of developmental level or level of perspective taking Correct. on yes. oneself and, and life. Yes, and I would maintain that this is the only relationship book that takes a developmental perspective okay. on uh -huh. romantic relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thank you very much for your very important work. And some people might wonder, what has this to do with sustainability? That uh, is the theme of every interview that I make. Yeah. It has a very, very profound Im importance uh, in the sustainability aspect of our cultures. Because so much of what we do is around finding a partner, more of uh, what we do than we are aware of, I would absolutely argue. So we have a lot of black or, or unknown parts of our personality that are involved when we try to be attractive mm -hmm. to find the partner we yes. want in life. And from that, uh, that not knowing who we are and what our purpose is and what is really attractive to a partner brings a lot of confusion that makes us consume in ways that are simply not rational mm -hmm. in the long run. Yeah. You want me to say something about that? Yeah. Um, Please. Well, this is often a, a very shameful thing to talk about for men and for women and often triggers emotional reactions when we talk about what I call our sexual selection process yeah. and uh, associated with the primary fantasy. Hmm. And I mean, we both and nobody who's watching this video, no humans would be here if our primary drive would not be eros and in that in the human part our sex drive yeah. and how men compete for certain types of women mm -hmm. and women then from the men that compete for them choose a certain type of men. Mm -hmm. And in a nutshell we can say that women choose success objects, men that can protect and provide and men choose women who are sex objects. And now some will, will, will oppose, so is this some kind of Darwinian? <laughs> Uh, explanation of existence, but it's much more than that. Yeah, I mean, first of all, Darwin looked more at survival of the fittest, yeah. as far as I understand. As, as what is said, and claimed about him. You he, first he, need to be born in order yeah. to survive. Yeah. So, and who gets uh, chosen to be a procreator, mm. right? This is mainly determined by the female. Yeah. And men throughout history, throughout known history, have come up with solutions to compete more and more effectively for women, to provide them with more safety and with more comfort in order to sustain the human race. So it's only natural that women choose men hmm. who have this capacity to make yeah. them more safe and to provide better for their offspring. Yeah. And that has worked for uh, hundred thousands of years and what happened in the last, let's say, hundred years with the Industrial Revolution is that these demands from for many women unconsciously have become so high, right, that a man has to earn a lot of money, which means a lot of pollution of the planet mm. and social injustice and so on and so yeah. forth, that it's just not sustainable any longer. Yeah. And I mean, that asks, of course, a lot of men and women, of men not no longer to compete with, with each other for the most sexy and demanding women, and for women to really with, rethink their responsibility in uh, sustainability of the planet by the men that they ultimately choose as partners to procreate with. Yep. And, and this is such an unconscious thing or such a politically incorrect thing to talk about mm. because it often raises a lot of 
negative emotions and red flags and resistance yeah. because of course every man feels I want to be with the most the prettiest woman I can be with and are you telling me I should settle for somebody that I'm not sexually attracted to yeah. right and the woman of course even often unconsciously feels attracted to a man who raises her testosterone levels that makes her more willing to have sex with someone mm. right like women we know are uh, attracted sexually to powerful spiritual leaders, political leaders, yeah. uh, industry leaders, and so on and so forth, yeah. and and it's sort of like a you know a high claim to make. But at least you know we want to make that conscious that that is the underlying thing, the underlying drive that that drives our economic and our growth, which uh, is just no longer sustainable in the way that we are doing it right now. Mm. So it's about it's about uh, development of individuals that will contribute to the development of culture. Right. That will uh, be more aware of what we're doing, how we are choosing our partners. Right. And and the way to do that to to make that shift that it is still the the relationship romantic and has meaning right and is yeah. loving is that we shift our focus from the purely external mm. looking at the physical body of the woman looking at the success the worldly success that the man has and shift our focus to these interior developmental lines mm. and see that the value in a relationship is not only for procreation and for having that safety, right, and having that status, hmm. but also to have this interior connection for spiritual growth, for consciousness hmm. growth, uh, for healing together, and for serving that larger purpose. Yeah. So once we know what our evolutionary authentic purpose is, which is something that comes from the interior, yeah. and we focus on finding a partner who can serve that evolutionary purpose best with us. Mm. That's true for males and for females, mm. right? If we assume that we now have achieved a certain equality between males and females, then automatically our focus shifts away from these what we call right hand exterior quadrants, physical yeah. body and social status, to this evolutionary impulse, mm. right? Which is something spiritual, yeah. has to do with consciousness, with interiority. Yes. And that puts less emphasis on the exterior and more emphasis on the interior. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Jackie. Thanks for your work. <laughs>